Randy, you use the FedEx delivery man as a bit of an illustration for how we should view giving, owning things, generosity, all of that. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between holding on to what belongs to God versus delivering it where it needs to go? Yeah, the example I use is, you know, suppose whether it's the FedEx guy or UPS or whatever, um, shows up at my door and sometimes he takes things from me most often he's delivering things to me but either way you look at it suppose that i found out that uh, every package that i'd been giving the fedex guy for the last year um he was taking home and keeping for himself <laughs> what 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 would i do what would i say we have a problem well, uh, yeah we got a real problem and so it's usually the same guy who comes, and and uh, so the next time I he comes, I say, hey, we got to have a talk here. So what's happening to all these things that I'm giving you that are supposed to go to other people, and they never make it to the other people? And he says, well, I take all that stuff home and keep it. And then suppose, what would I say? Well, I would say, well, why would you do that? And then he looks at me, well, well, if you didn't want me to keep it, you shouldn't have given it to me in the first place. I wasn't giving it to you. I was entrusting it to you to get it where I want it to go. So what makes us think that just because God gives us so much in the wealthiest country uh, you know, per capita in human history, why do we think that just because God put something in our hands— that we're supposed to keep it. He intends for us to keep some of it, to certainly spend some of it on ourselves and our family, but he intends, I think, a very significant amount to be given away to his kingdom and to help the needy all over the world, um, to help our church, our community, uh, to care for the poor, to do all of the things that uh, we do to extend the gospel all over the world. So in the same way that I would look at the FedEx guy if he said, well, why did you give it to me if you didn't want me to keep it? I would say, you're the FedEx guy. <laughs> That's your job to get it into the hands of who it's intended to. Come on, this is stealing. I mean, this isn't right. I mean, that's not your job. And I think sometimes we don't understand our job. We don't understand what it means to be a steward because stewardship begins with the first fruits. It begins with giving. That's the, that's the way you learn to be a good steward is first and foremost by giving. And so like that book, Managing God's Money, it's true. It's a lot about a lot of other things, getting out of debt, you know, and those kinds of things. But it's also, uh, and, and fundamentally, giving is probably woven into every single chapter. It's not like, oh, we got a chapter on giving in this book on managing God's money. It's woven in, and the reason it's woven in is because that's where we start, because only when we get that it all belongs to God and my first responsibility is to give it back to him and invest and store up treasures for ourselves in heaven, not on earth. Once I get that, then the other parts of stewardship begin to fall into place.